gentlemen, live from the Historic Allies Theater in Springfield, Missouri, it's the Mystery Hour! And here's your host, Mystery Jeff Holden! How are you guys doing? Good? Excellent, because we have a great show. So I imagine you will remain good is the hope. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, we do have a great show for you guys tonight. We have the music of Brian Copeland. <clears throat> as well as an interview with professional eater, Randy Santel. A million subscribers on YouTube. Shall we get this show started? How's it going? Hey, I'm doing good. How about you? Good. Oh, you got the jib shot hey. on you. <laughs> I, I like it. <laughs> um, what have you been up to, Mo? I haven't seen you for a while. We don't, I know the show been... airs weekly, but we don't tape it weekly. Exactly. I feel it's like been it's been a while. Three weeks. What's the most interesting thing you've done in the last three weeks? Oh, that's tough. I was sick, so that was exciting. It was interesting for a lot of reasons, but none that I want to share on camera. Yeah. You're like, oh, what's happening to my body is yeah. interesting. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, let's stop. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Things I've noticed. I let's do that. How about things I've yeah. noticed? These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. These things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. I love that animation. We got a new animation, and I love it very much. Also. Look, stick and shake. Okay, here we go. <laughs> These are things I've noticed, things I've observed. Here we go. Um, I've noticed that bathroom stall doors are the tinder of the truck driving community. <laughs> don't swipe the wall. <clears throat> That's a rule for every bathroom, don't swipe the wall. I've noticed that to be fair though, being unceremoniously fired is way better than being ceremoniously fired. All right, clean out your stuff. Get on the throne. The ribbon dancers are coming. <laughs> I've noticed that iPhone chargers should be called Apple Jacks. <laughs> <clears throat> I've noticed that history doesn't really matter. In a few years, Quentin Tarantino will make a movie rewriting, rewriting the ending. <laughs> I messed up the ending. I've noticed that whenever I see a screenshot of a picture on someone's phone, all I can think about is how they've got a low battery. <laughs> Smattering. And finally, I've noticed that the easiest way to get rid of the bearer of bad news is to delete the Messenger app. <laughs> That's things I've noticed. Things I've noticed. These things I've noticed. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Things I've noticed. That was a doozy. Hey, we've got um, an author tonight. We get to, we have two interviews this show. We get to hear from an author. Her name is H.J. Uh, Thomason. She goes by Harper as well. And she wrote this book, um, The Blankie. So she couldn't make it into the studio, the theater tonight. So I'm going to head over to her house, to her living room, to interview her. Just one second. Here I am. This doesn't look anything like my house. <laughs> Not one bit. Not one bit? Yep. You, um, okay. <laughs> How old are you, Harper? Seven. Seven? When's your birthday? February 7th. Just yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> what does your living room look like at home? It has um, a couch that has a backing um, with toys behind it because yeah. I play back there a lot and call it Harper Zone. It's a Harper Zone? Yeah. 
So um, let me ask you this. You're up kind of late tonight. Mm -hmm. Did your mom do anything to help you stay awake? Yes, she gave me gummy bears. <laughs> How many gummy bears did you get to stay up late? Mm -hmm. Like one or like no. a handful? Uh, probably a handful. Yeah, all right. So um, this is a book called The Blankie that you wrote. Mm -hmm. Is this one of your books? Is this one of your favorite books? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So if we, it's, you, should we read it to everyone? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the blankie. A little girl, a girl had, had a, a blankie. blankie. One day, okay. the little, little girl, girl lost her, her blankie. blankie. A boy found her blankie. I haven't the end. I haven't finished the book. Oh, I thought that was the end. <laughs> what do you think about unicorns? I love them so much. How are they compared to like a regular horse? Um, they have a horn on their head. They can shoot magic out. What happens when they shoot magic out? Um. It depends what they want to happen. Yeah. It mostly uses your mind. Instead of their ability, they use their mind to do their magic. Can you do magic? No. Have you ever tried? No. <laughs> Should we try right now? No. <laughs> I say we try, ready? Nope. Try it. Out. Ready? One, two, three. Are you doing it? No. <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I, I still don't know, but I think the most one I really want to do is be a mom. That sounds good. That sounds good. What's your favorite thing about your mom? Um, she's funny. She yeah. plays Candyland with me. That's two things. I, I have a bunch of things. What's your least favorite thing about your mom? Mm, when she says no to me eating candy. I had a big, I had a big, big sugar stick, and it was swaying in my candy bowl for a long time. Then um, when it came close to my birthday, um, I got to eat it. That's cool. What's a sugar stick? Um, a stick that's like a straw and yeah. has candy. He, and it, but sugar. That makes sense. <laughs> All right, so this other book you wrote is The Little Flower. Uh-huh, it's also not done. Oh, come on. I wrote it a long time ago. I couldn't find it for the rest of my days. <laughs> this little flower had five flower petals Colors. What's that say? Not telling. <laughs> what? You're not gonna tell me what it says? I was in kindergarten back then. What are you in now? First grade. <laughs> Is there anything you want to say to any family and friends um, watching this? Like, there's the camera right there. You can say something to the camera. Um, not really, but um, I want to thank my grandma um, and my dad and my Uncle Mike. That sounds great. There she is, Harper Thomason, the author. That was great. We'll be right back. 
That comedy bit brought to you by BRS CPAs and Advisors. Closed captioning provided by Paragon Architecture. adventures to pursue escape a room and solve a clue unique museums to look into couples massage with your boo and do some shopping just for you branson woohoo you won't believe it until you do more shows than you even knew amusement parks with shorter queues so much cuisine for you to choose seafood italian and barbecue log cabins fit your whole crew a tired parents rendezvous family time to feel brand new i think we just had a breakthrough branson woohoo Believe it until you do. Do, 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 do. Your vacation is overdue. Woo! <laughs> the Mystery Hour is brought to you by 929 The Beat. Guest booking provided by Gig Salad. How about those commercials? Hilarious, touching. Hey, we have a great guest tonight. We also have a great guest sponsor. Boom, the History Museum on the Square recently voted the best new attraction by the 10 best voters of, of all the voters, but it was the 10 best award, but all the voters, they won USA Today. I'll do better, I'll do better next time. Hey, we have an amazing guest. This is so cool. He is a competitive eater, and uh, he has a million subscribers, just under a million subscribers on YouTube, and it's fascinating what he does. Please put your hands together for Randy Santel. This is awesome. You know, we uh, sometimes have a pillow out on the couch because people, like, they don't have enough, they look tiny on the couch. You. I do not need that right now. No. How tall are you? <laughs> I am 6'5". Six 6'5". Five. Six five. Been 6'5 since high school. My weight depends on when you ask. Yeah, right. So, and you played football? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I actually played at Missouri State here. Yeah? From 04 to 07. Lineman? Yes, yeah, I was a, my dad didn't give me any speed, so I was way too slow. Yeah. Could never jump over a credit card either, so <laughs> I was an offensive lineman. Yeah, okay. And then tell us about the world of competitive eating, what this means, what do you do? Well, you were right the first time earlier, I'm a professional eater. Professional there's eater. there's food challenges, which I do, similar yeah. to the show Man vs. Food. Yeah. But then there's also competitive eater, which is like eating contests, oh. which you'd watch on 4th of July, that hot dog Hot thing. dog. You don't do that. I'm sorry. Correct. Yeah. Sorry. I, it's not that I won't. It's just that food challenges is kind of my niche. Yeah. I'm the, the FC stands for foodchallenges.com, yeah. which is basically a global database all around the world of food challenges with tips and stuff. But I've been doing it since 2010. Believe it or not, I actually won a body transformation contest back yeah. in 2010. And then since then, I've got 829 food challenge wins in all 50 states and then 37 countries. Wow. So that is, a food challenge is like a restaurant says, you can't eat this tenderloin in 30 minutes. Is that sort of, that yes, sort of thing? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, and if you finish, usually the typical prize is I'll get the meal free, yeah. a sweet t-shirt that I always refer to it as, and then I'll have like my name and photo on the wall of fame. Yeah, and, um, but you make a living at this. Yes, yeah, everything is You can't make really a living great. with pictures and t-shirts, but because YouTube, yes. you can make a career out of no, it, No, right? yeah, we're alive at a perfect time for all that. I started yeah. back in 2010, actually, kind of by accident, my 10 year anniversary is coming up in March, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna be taking everybody that was involved out for dinner. But uh, it's been a long journey, so. Um, what's, what's the hardest one? Do you have one that? I've done like three or four challenges that were around nine to nine and a half pounds. So when it gets to that point, it's crazy. And it actually, how much you can eat for most people, or, or at least in this world, it depends on the size of your stomach. 
Yeah. So right now I'm on a 12 week break to lose some weight okay. to get ready for more touring. But yeah. pretty much the more stomach fat you have right there, the harder it is it restricts your stomach organs from oh. being able to relax and fit more in it. There's a real science to it. Oh yeah, yeah, no, there's yeah. a lot to it. Yeah, and so then, but you post a lot of videos, more than just going to these challenges. You, you're, you're able to do it really consistently, right? Oh yeah, yeah, we film all of our stuff way in advance. I have yeah. two full-time editors. I hate editing. Yeah. I would rather paint than edit. Yep. And they pretty much, I do all the posting. Yeah. So in, with the internet, you can post anywhere. So even if right. I'm in Asia, no matter where I'm at, my editors just send me the footage and I can post it. Would you have, when you were a kid, ever thought this would be a thing? I've always been able to eat. Back, yeah. I actually lost 40 pounds in yeah. fifth grade. Yeah. I used to be 205 pounds. Yeah. And I lost all that weight through Weight Watchers. My mom used to count my points. Yeah. Yeah. But then I started with football. I used to play soccer. Yeah. But then once I got to high school, I knew how much running was involved. Yeah. So I switched over to football. And you and wanted then, to gain weight. Yes, yeah. From my junior to senior season, I gained about 100 pounds. Wow. So I used to work at Subway, and I would every day I'd work, I'd eat three double meat footlongs. <laughs> with all the healthy vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, there may be a future for me. Yes. <laughs> so, actually, one of my biggest regrets is there yeah. was a restaurant back in the day when I was first here for college yeah. that did a 15 egg omelet. Yeah. And then I didn't know anything about food challenges then. So yeah. my buddies used to always tell me I should try it. Yeah. But then once I actually started into food challenges, the restaurant was closed. Yeah. So that's like my one biggest disappointment. Have you, are there some that you have been conquered by? You haven't been able oh, to yes. do? Yeah. yeah, I was really aggressive in 2019. I was 126 and 12. 126 so, and 12. But the cool thing about like food boxer. challenges, I can go back. Like yeah. I'll, I'll be rematching them once I'm more fit and in better shape, able yeah. to eat more later on this year. Wow, all right, well let's, let's do a different food challenge <laughs> where we toss grapes to each other. I dominated, I, am I standing up? Yeah, come on over. I'm really good at hibachi with the shrimp, so yeah. this will be okay. All right, you get one. I don't know how, I don't know. Okay. And then, and then this is a teamwork one, okay? Okay. So I'll go first. All right. <laughs> ah. That was a lot of walk. Oh, no. That right. was my fault. It's I teamwork. take responsibility for that. Ah, oh. shoot. <laughs> oh. All right. All right, I got this one. There it is. All right, you're going to get one. There we go. Now we're going high. All right. <laughs> that even surprised me. Oh! Yeah. I have a In fat tongue. Okay. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, oh, I was in there. I almost got the bounce, too. Did you sign a waiver? Okay. I did. There we go. Yes. We got 10 seconds left. All right, I'm going to get this one. <laughs> yes. All right, we're going to end on a win. There he yeah. is, Randy Santel. <laughs> we'll be back with Brian. Travel and accommodations provided by Hotel Vandervoort. The Mystery Hour is brought to you by the Springfield, Missouri Convention and Visitors Bureau. To learn all about the incredible experiences you can have right here, visit springfieldmo.org. OTC, the official educational provider of the Mystery Hour. Musical guests brought to you by Bear Village. We have a great musical guest. Please put your hands together for Brian Copeland. Will you remember the times that I whisper in your ear? Not only sweet nothings, but that there's nothing left to fear. I tell you when we're older that I would still be here 
And when you would cry That I'd wipe away your tears But your eyes won't be the same I know that you know me But will you even know my name? Will you remember the day That I fell in love with you? Will you remember the time that I was untrue. Will you remember the pain and the laughs and sorrows through? Will you remember me? Cause I remember you. Will you remember the times that I'd seen you a doom? That pleasant realization that it was all about you. The ocean in your eyes never knew just what to do. That wave of emotion saw the love that was true. But your mind won't be the same. I know that you know me, but will you even know my name? Will you remember the pain and the laughs that saw us through? Will you remember me? Cause I remember the cracks and the lights from a long life. They won't break our love apart. And when our memories fade, it won't change a thing. In our hearts, hearts, but your mind it's not the same. I know that you know me, but do you even know my name? Do you remember the day that I fell in love with you? Do you remember the time that I was so true? When everything is new, I still love you. Oh, I still love you. Mm. I still love. Gorgeous. Thank you. That, man. Thank you. There's Brian Copeland. Hey, 10% of our box office proceeds tonight goes to the Dream Center, a wonderful organization. We'll see you guys next week. Craft services provided by Big Whiskey's.